Chris there and flowers all here on a Monday. Time now for Dot Talk, brought to you by Wuhan Hospital. As we welcome to the program this morning, Phyllis Ingham. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am great. Yourself? Uh, I'm doing great. And when the sun shines, that always helps. You know, it just makes you feel that much better, even though it's still cold out. <laughs> well, good morning. Welcome. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What uh, what brought you to Indiana? Because I can tell by the accent you're you're not from Indiana. Well, I am a nurse practitioner. I'm originally from a little town called Evadale in okay. Texas. Uh -huh. um, got my master's degree and um, was looking for a small town to be in. So when I was approached by a headhunter, <laughs> I took the chance up here and I love it out of here. What got you into the uh, medical field? What, uh, at what age, should I say, uh, did you know that that was the avenue you wanted um, to go to? Probably as an early teen. Um, I wanted to help people and I'm really interested in people. So that seemed to be the most obvious choice for me. Obviously, then uh, you started that uh, trail down that medical field and uh, in the, the college world of that. And uh, did, did it just keep growing then as, as you got into uh, able to get into some of that uh, college classes and stuff? It did. It really did. Um, I finished my bachelor's degree and knew pretty soon after that I wanted to get my master's. But due to a lot of illness in the family and I was the only nurse, that waited until I was in my 50s, unfortunately. <laughs> and then now you here you are in Indiana. Yeah, I love Indiana. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, what, what, what drives you to uh, want to help people. I mean, obviously, uh, just making sure people understand everything is, is a big part of that. That's a big part of it. The payoff for me is when I see people make changes in the way they treat their health, the way they treat themselves. Mm -hmm. um, when I see positive outcomes, that is the whole payoff for me. Yeah, that is, uh, that's kind of, you know, the education part is uh, because sometimes doctors will start talking and uh, they use those big words mm -hmm. and terminologies that and people are going, yeah, and people are going, what are you talking about? Right, right. <laughs> so just educating is, is a big part of that. Right. And the thing with nurse practitioners where the doctors are more moved because they've got to do numbers of patients uh -huh. and that's the way they're paid. I don't. Okay. And so, especially with me being a new person to this area, it took a little while for people to kind of catch on <laughs> that. Yes, she's there and yes, she's going to do good for uh -huh. me. Okay. Um, so they've learned that I will actually listen to them, okay? And that is a big part because some people just need to be heard. Right. And, and you know, the more that somebody can explain to you what's going on, right. then, then right. the better diagnosis you can give them. Right. Because if uh, you know, they're kind of shy or, or uh, don't really want to talk to the person, it's hard to uh, maybe get out what, ne what those next steps need to be. Right. No, that's certainly true. Uh, sometimes they make better decisions if you yeah. actually give the information to them. Obviously, uh, how long have you been here? I mean, you said you, oh, know, you were uh, uh, started really late. four like, years. Four years now. Okay, awesome. I That's... came right before COVID. Okay. And so, so how was that? Uh, that you know, was, coming in right that before was COVID? very interesting, very <laughs> interesting. Uh, because for a while, they were telling patients not to come to the office because right. they were worried about the spread mm -hmm. of the disease. And so you couple that with someone that's completely unknown to any Anna, so <laughs> it was definitely a challenge. So obviously, uh, you know, we still have that nasty word floating around sometimes, but how much of that uh, do you see now? Is, I mean, how much of it is more just uh, the normal, back to what, what we would call the normal colds and, and illnesses? Um, I really haven't seen any COVID in probably five weeks now, which is very encouraging. Yeah, that is good. That is good. Maybe we're starting to get back to a normal, mm -hmm. right? Right. And with the clinics and the hospitals now, the we have an option as to whether to wear masks mm -hmm. or not. So That's always a, a good thing, too. I know. Patients are so tired <laughs> of masks. They can actually see uh, somebody's face on the other I side know. of it. Yeah. It's like I go out into the community now, and people are going, Phyllis, and I go, <laughs> I don't recognize you. <laughs> it's like a whole new uh, welcoming, right? It is, it is. Tell us a little bit too about uh, do you specialize in certain areas or is it uh, um, you just kind of open to you know whatever I'm the needs are? I'm in family practice okay. and I love family practice. It's such a wide array. And I tell the patients that 
I was taught very shallow but very wide. So if there's something I don't understand, I have the luxury of having Dr. Brubecker as my collaboratory yeah. physician and such a wide variety of specialists yeah. in the area right. too that are really close. So it's neat too because you uh, get to maybe work with the whole family then by being right, in it right. uh, from the kids to the, to the parents. Uh, really enjoy the little kids because uh -huh. they're really frightened when they come in so <laughs> when they find out hey you're a grandma and hey you're not going to do mean things with pointy objects they're pretty excited <laughs> they probably really like the uh, accent they, they, um, does that really grab them too yes it does <laughs> grabs a lot of adults too yeah it's, it's fun too to talk to uh people uh from not in indiana and then right. you know you when you start hearing the accent you go like when you came in, I knew right away that you weren't from Indiana. That's true. A lot of people think I'm from Georgia or okay. Tennessee, and when I listen to people from those areas, I go, mm, not quite. <laughs> so what's been, uh, obviously you said you got started later in life in this, but what's been one of your uh, most joyous times? I mean, what, what, what's something that you, you'll remember uh, oh goodness, years so down the road? Uh, I'll tell you, I have a lady here in town that is in her early 60s and because she had cared for her mother she hadn't cared for her own health mm -hmm. and so she came in to me with a couple of problems and we started with that but it gradually progressed and she ended up having a lot of serious problems mm -hmm. and now a year later she's in good health at one point when she first met me she said Phyllis you keep finding things wrong <laughs> with me I'm afraid to come back but now she's enjoying good health, and that makes yeah. the payoff for me that much better. That's awesome. If there's one thing out there, too, that you want to tell families that uh, really maybe even young families that are getting started, what's one thing to keep an eye on and, and, and maybe if they have questions to, to reach out to you? Oh, um, anything with their health, uh, anything that they aren't certain of, please don't go to the Internet for your answers, okay? <laughs> because I have so many people that come in with so much in misinformation and then they start talking to me and I start explaining why that's misinformation. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the littlest thing can uh, really really cause issues down the road if you yeah, don't oh, get it certainly. started um, early. Uh, we had a gentleman during the whole COVID thing and the hydroxychloroquine that came in to me and he he was very adamant I'm not going to get the vaccine and uh, but you're going to give me hydroxychloroquine if I do. And I said, no, sir, I'm not. It's not approved for that use. And he says, well, that's all right. I can make it myself. And my eyes got big. <laughs> and he says, well, I'm former military. And between the Internet and the military, I've got this. So I decided to look up this formula that he was telling me. And it has a silver base to it. A couple of things come to mind. I've seen someone with a silver overdose and they have the most beautiful silver blue skin that you've ever seen. The opposite of that is when you look at EKGs and you see that TP type thing in mm -hmm. the middle of an EKG, that is electrical activity going through the, the most important part of your heart, the ventricles. And so if you don't have that hydroxychloroquine, dosage right if you've mixed anything wrong that uh, QRS or the TP widens out until it flat ones so you can actually kill yourself mm, that's uh, not good. so that sort of thing when they come in and they tell me I can do this and you don't worry about it I just make sure they've got the information so if they decide to pursue it they have the knowledge yeah, yeah. internet's good for some things but I'm guessing uh, doctor stuff usually not not so much no <laughs> Well, Phyllis, I appreciate you coming in this morning and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How do uh, somebody wants to get a hold of you and talk to you? How do they get a hold of oh, you? Oh, I am both at the Fulton Clinic and the Rochester Clinic. I'm okay. at Fulton on Tuesday and Fridays and Rochester Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Awesome. Uh, you can call the clinic here in town. The number is 574 Two two three four three three seven, and the girls can hook you up with me at whichever location you want to see me at. Awesome. Well, hopefully we can uh, send some people your way, and uh, you can help get them on the right track. Great. Well, thank you for coming in again this morning. Thank you. Have a great day, Phyllis Ingham with the Willow Hospital here on Doc Talk here this morning. Right now it's Ed Sheeran and Photograph ninety two point one WROI.